Then we move on to your game, Bishop Healing Catholic at Central Lion George Little Rock. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm starting to realize week after week when I meet the coaches and I talk to them that I really hate picking against any of the teams I'm playing because, you know, these guys are always so good to us here at the station. Uh, I got a chance to meet Coach Lorenzen uh, over the phone, not in person, but uh, I got to talk to him uh, about Central Line, George Little Rock. Um, I picked against Bishop Hewen last week and Coach Stefan. I can't do it again. I have to go with them, even though... I saw the highlight film of Central Lion George Little Rock, and they look amazing. I just think when you take one of your best players, your receiver, and put him at quarterback, I think that, that, that you can't help but realize you're also losing a great receiver. And I think that that makes Jerry Stefford's job that much more focused on who he takes away. And I think there's nobody better that I've met who I just feel like is an absolute schemer on defense like he is. I think he's going to find a way to use that to his advantage that they took away a top wide receiver to put him at quarterback. I think he's going to find a way to make them pay. So I think Bishop Heelan wins that. And I also picked against Heelan last week. I really thought East was East could have won, but they didn't. And how can you go against Sabian Clark? I think he's one of the best athletes that I've seen in Sioux City this year so far. I'm going Heelan as well on that one, for sure. And then we kind of move on to Sioux City North Fort Dodge. That's my game. Uh, but what, what is, you, we've had your take on it. Who do, you, who do you have on this game? Oh, North and Fort Dodge? Well, I think if, if you played Madden, going back to the Madden analogy, I think Deion Claiborne is the quarterback you would want to play with. Anybody who can rip off a 99 and 85-yard touchdown run in the same game is the guy. I'm going with North. Um, you know, they're playing Fort Dodge. I know Fort Dodge is, has got their running back, Sam Cook, but I just, I'm feeling it with North. I, I went to their uh, preseason. I got to co- talk to their offensive uh, coordinators and the coaching staff, and oh my gosh, and uh, they were just absolutely amazing. And I had, a, I had a feeling that they were just, they were on the verge of doing something. I didn't know what that something was, but they've already got their first win of the season under their belt. I think they're going to be, I think that can be con- contagious. And uh, I think I think they're going to make it happen. So I'm going with North. And do I go against my school again? <laughs> I got Fort Dodge in a really close game. Oh, you picked against I, them. I, I did. I feel Who really bad guy? about it. Your own school. I, <laughs> I really I really think that Sam Cook is that real deal, and he might wear down North's offense in the end. It's going to be a really close game, though. I'm giving North a lot more credit. They come away and they win this game. North is uh, for real in in the Siouxland area. They'll be one of the top teams. So, hoping you know they can kind of come away with a victory. But it's going to be a really close game, I think, in Fort Dodge that night. But now onto the big show and on, on Saturday. Here we go with college football again. Best time of the year. <laughs> yeah. So, but we start out with BYU at Nebraska. Who do you got in this one? Well, I'm really anxious to see how Coach Mike Riley schemes against BYU's running quarterback play. Um, I think Nebraska's going to do it. I've, I've been to Memorial Stadium, um, and it's so difficult. It's, I, th- I feel like it's a tough place for anyone to play. Um, BYU is as good equipped as anybody, but that being said, nobody's really equipped for it. I just, I just think Nebraska wins this game. And also they lose Amir Abdullah, and that is a huge loss in the backfield for the Huskers. But they also have they have Jordan Westerkamp, the receiving corpse, and then they also have Tommy Armstrong yeah. behind center again. So I think it's going to be a really close game. Taysom Hill can basically do it all. He rushed for 460 yards and 15 touchdowns last year. He got injured in the fifth game of the year, and that really took BYU down a level. So I think in Mike Riley's first game at the helm, I think they get the job done, but it's going to be a really close game there. But another regional game that we have to look at is Northern Iowa and uh, at Iowa State. So who do you got in between the Panthers and the Cyclones? Well, Northern Iowa, so it's, it's taken them a, a little while to figure out the quarterback spot, whereas Iowa State's had a whole offseason with C.J. Beathers as the quarterback, as the guy. Um, you know, I think, I think Iowa State – oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm getting my Iowa and Iowa State. Oh, rookie mistake, wrong guy. Actually, <laughs> but no, I met Coach Rhodes. Let's talk about that, okay? I met Coach Rhodes. Oh, I can't believe I did that. People are going to make fun of me. It's awful. I'm a New Yorker. Look at this, right? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're from Buffalo. Come on. Exactly. Give me a break. <laughs> well, 
All right, but here's the thing. Uh, Iowa State said, you know, I was talking about Coach Rhodes there for a second. Coach you Rhodes. Had it, you had it. Yes, okay. Um, so Co- I, I just feel like they've got to win this game um, because it's just, after, after having a two-win season a year ago, it's just, it's frustrating. I think the fans are going to be energized. They've got the new stadium upgrades done. Um, you know, it's just bad. It, it's one of those situations where I really feel – like, Coach Rhodes needs this win. His team needs this win. They've got a lot of good JUCOs that have come in on defense to really help out a team that was very porous on defense. I mean, I, I remember looking it up one time on ESPN, and they were ranked, like, I didn't know there were that many schools. They finished and, dead last yes. in total defense, I believe, yeah. last year. So, I mean, they're bringing in a lot of kids from the JUCO level. That can only help. And, you know, the hope is that, that they're going to find a way to, I, I think, over there, their hope is that they find a way to – to, to start to turn the program around. I just feel like they're desperate. They need it. They've, they're catching Northern Iowa at a time of transition for themselves. Had a lot of good players leave them from a year ago. I think that's what happens. And Paul Rhodes is on the hot seat right now. He's not won more than three games the last two seasons. He needs, especially this victory right away. They've lost to two FCS schools, Northern Iowa, NDSU last year, and they really need to beat Northern Iowa. This I really think Iowa State will win this game. It might be a little closer, but Samby Richardson, he didn't have to compete with anybody this year. He also has his three wide receivers, Devario Montgomery, Alan Lazard, and Quinton Bundridge is back from an ACL injury. He injured himself on the fourth play last year against NDSU. So he's got them back, and also the line was really beat up last year. And I think having them back, being more fresh, I think Iowa State hopefully will have a better season this year, and hopefully they can improve defensively as well. So we both have have the Cyclones in that one. Mm. Next one is kind of one that's under the radar for this week because it's not a neutral site game, but it's a pretty big matchup. you got Texas at number 11, Notre Dame. I mean, I just think Notre Dame is going to win that game. Texas is trying to build some things with Charlie Strong, and they're making a lot of changes. I like what I hear from over there. But I just think um, Brian Kelly's got Notre Dame more established. They're at home. I'm going with the Golden Domers. And Texas, six freshman starters going in to play in that opening game in South Bend on the line, as well as at the linebacking core and in the secondary as well. So really, a lot of there's a lot of young players that are playing for Texas. And Notre Dame with Malik, Malik Zaire, I really think that he's got he's got the he can pass. He can run the ball as well. I watched him a few games against USC. He was kind of cleaning up when they were getting blown out. And then last year, his coming out party was in that Music City Bowl when they when they upset LSU. So I really think this could be the deepest team that Brian Kelly's had uh, since they made that run to the national championship. So I'm going to go with the Irish in that one, and I think they'll win by a few touchdowns at least. And another one that this could be one of the craziest games of the week is Number 15, Arizona State against Texas A&M, and they'll be playing that game in Houston. Who do you got in that game, Chris? I loved what I saw last year in Arizona State. The few times I got to watch them, I think they're building something here. Um, I think they're going to go on the road and get a big road win. Really? Yep. Should I say not so fast? Yes, go for because it. Because I'm, I'm going with Texas A&M. Now, I know that Mike Bercovici, and he'll be looking to DJ Foster for the Devils. Good tandem there, but really, Kyle Allen, he'll be playing against basically his hometown school. He went to, he's from Scottsdale, Arizona, play for Desert Mountain, and this guy, this wide receiver who's just a sophomore for Texas A&M, his name is Speedy Noyle, a big fan of his, and Josh Reynolds, that pass game. This is going to be a really high-scoring game, but I think Texas A&M, to A&M is going to outlast the Sun Devils in the end. Yeah. As we reach, this is the biggest game, primetime game, game day will be there. This is in Arlington, in Jerry World, number 20, Wisconsin, versus the Crimson Tide. They are number three in the nation right now. Who are you seeing in that one? I think Alabama's going to win that game, and not just because they're higher ranked, but I think Alabama's kind of due. Like, they, they've been so good for so many years, but the last few, they haven't been the ones that have, that, that have been, you know, uh, the top dogs. They've, they've lost it. Now last year we had a national championship game without anyone from the Southeast Conference. So I just think they're due. I think they're ready to to get back on top. I like Wisconsin, but I just I don't see the arrow necessarily pointing up the same way I see it at, at Alabama. I think Alabama's ticked off the way things have gone. I think Nick Saban is 
has been under fire a little bit for the first time, and I think right. he's just, I think, I don't know, I just I have a gut feeling about Alabama. And with Wisconsin, they're also, I mean, they lose Melvin Gordon. Yep. And right now, Corey Clement is a good running back. Saw him play against Nebraska last year, had a huge game. Joel Savi, I think, is coming, you know, he'll be playing a lot better this year. I think he, with Paul Chris coming in, his mechanics are getting better. And then there won't be that, you know, should he be playing, should he be starting, or should he not be. But Alabama's still trying to figure out that quarterback situation. They have Jake Coker, who came in from Florida State, lost the job to Blake Sims last year. They have Cooper Bateman and Alec Morris. So really, I, I don't even think that's going to be a big deal. Alabama has won the last three season openers that were neutral site games. I got the Crimson Tide in this one, and I think they're going to win by a pretty good margin. But our last game, what are you going to say? It's going to be that huge Labor Day night game. You have number one Ohio State at Virginia Tech, probably an, into a hostile lane stadium environment. Who do you see in this one? I so badly want to pick Virginia Tech. I'm a Bills fan. We just had Tyrod Taylor be our starting quarterback. We just named him. I'm so pumped about that. He's a Virginia Tech alum. And I, I want to pick him, and I don't have – the guts to do it. I think it's Ohio State all the way. They lost last time and they came back and they just won every other game. And, you know, basically, I think maybe they had one other stumble along the way, but uh, but when they maybe played... Penn State, they went to overtime. Yeah. They went to overtime, but they found a way to win. That's right. So, yeah, so Ohio State, I don't think they make that mistake again. They're too good of a program. Obviously, they won the national championship last year when everybody thought they were going to lose. Uh, where they did have like the third quarterback, Cardale Jones. He's a star now because of that. I mean, I just I can't see them letting it happen two seasons in a row like that. So you're going with the Buckeyes. That's right. And even with Ohio State with their suspensions to Joey Bosa and hybrid backs Jalen Marshall, Dontre Wilson, receiver Corey Smith, I still think Ohio State goes in there. Depending on who's who's under center, JT Barrett or Cardale Jones, we won't know until probably game time. But watching Cardell Jones last year live against Oregon, he is just so powerful. He has, a, he has a great arm. And when they need those three or four yards at the end, he's so physical he can push over the defense basically, get, those, get that yardage. And really Virginia Tech's kind of been a letdown the last few years. You know, you have high, ex high expectations for the Hokies. Then they kind of let you down. and I think they lost six games last year. But... Really, you got to go with the Buckeyes in this one. There, there is no other option. <laughs> they're yeah. really, they're going to be a good team this year. Yeah, but I think you got to. I think you can't go the other way. You just can't find a way to do it. You really can't. Yeah. But no, this has been great, and this is our first podcast. So yeah. Hopefully, you know, we keep something like this going, keep the streak going, and we'll get you some high school and college picks each week. But this is myself, Josh Sacknoff, Chris Nyhouse. What's up? And. We will see, we will talk to you next week.